guys welcome back to my channel and if you're new here my name is Hannah Renee and it is so nice to meet you today we're gonna to be doing a video where we follow a makeup tutorial so I'm gonna be following a tutorial by Jaclyn Hill with her Jaclyn Hill palette because I actually have that palette and we're just gonna be following along trying to see if we can create a look like hers this is my final look and you get to see if it looks like hers so let me know how I did in the comment section below, but anyways, let's just jump right on into this video. So let's see what she uses first. I skipped through the intro of her video because it's super long, but let's see here. <laughs> no, really. <laughs> Whenever I see a girl in public or like on social media, like with just foundation and brows, I'm always just like, how, how are you pulling this off and making it look so effortlessly beautiful? Because I feel like I just look like. So for today's video, I really want to focus on just the eyes. So she already did her brows and her foundation off camera. So I'm going to do that just real quickly and then I'll be right back. So, she did her foundation and brows already, so I did that as well. I'm going to link the products that I used down below because I just don't want to show them, <laughs> but now we're going to move on and see what she does next. So my eyes are already primed, so make sure that you do that. That is an absolute must when it comes to your eye makeup. If you don't prime your eyes, you're not going to have the outcome that you really desire. She already primed her eyelids, so I'm going to do that. I just have the CoverGirl Ready Set Gorgeous Concealer, which I've been using to prime my eyelids anyway, so I'm going to do that. My palette right here so let's get started I'm gonna start off by taking the third color in the palette which is the shade silk cream this is the morphe r37 so I'm just gonna start on the outer corner and begin to buff this kind of up in that transition area and whenever I say the term transition area I am referring to this area right here between the lid and the brow bone so lid brow bone and this is transition area right in between those two so I'm gonna do what she just did I technically did a little bit of it already, but my camera shut off, so I'm going to do it again real fast, but I'm just going to use that shade that she was talking about and lightly put it in that transition area. Like that. So I'm just blending this back and forth. I always start off in windshield wiper motions just like this. And then I always kind of get a circular motion going on. And as there is basically no product left on my brushes, I'm like buffing, blah, buffing it from the outer corner. I'm just going to slightly bring it into the inner corner, but we really don't want too much product in here. So she's really buffing that in. So I'm going to do the same thing where she's just going back and forth like this and then doing some buffing motions. I have no new product on my brush, by the way, to do that. All right, now I'm going to grab the shade Butter in the palette. And this one definitely has like an orangey, very warm undertone. So if you don't want to use that undertone, you don't have to use this shade. You could use any of the matte browns in this palette, but this is the one that I go in with. She's using this shade right here called Butter, like she just said. And she's putting it in the same spot. So in between every single shadow, you just want to make sure you blend it out because it will make everything just be seamless at the end. Jaclyn Hill is one of the best blenders I've ever watched. So I'm really excited to see how this turns out. But I'm just doing the same thing she's doing on the same brush. Okay. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna take this shade in the center of the palette, which is a super, super warm baby pukey brown, and it is called pukey for obvious reasons. I'm using the exact same brush, by the way, that I initially started off with, and I'm on my third color. So I'm gonna now, at this point, bring it just a little bit lower in that transition area. As before, I was blending it a higher up. Now I'm gonna be keeping it really nice and precise, which is why I love this brush, because it does have like that tapered tip, so it allows me to get like a little bit tighter when I need to. This brown I wouldn't typically use because it just has like an orangey, honestly it's pukey looking which is why she named it that, but I mean she's using it, it's one of her favorites so. Okay, so now at this point, I'm going to grab some of the Cover FX Perfect Setting Powder, which is just an amazing translucent powder, and I'm going to begin to carve out the shape of the eye makeup look that I want. I've done this so many times, it's just become like my thing that I have to do every single time I do my makeup. It just makes it so easy for me and foolproof. This is not a technique I typically do, but it's a Jaclyn Hill classic. She normally does this. I just don't have a brush like hers and I don't have the Cover FX powder, but I'm gonna use my sponge. Hopefully it turns out as precise and I have the Maybelline Fit Me loose powder, so we'll see how this works out. I'm gonna try my best. pretty okay. And so now I'll go back in with that brush and I'll just kind of blend it to that translucent powder and it will just catch any of the excess. So I'm gonna blend like she is. She didn't pick any more product up on her brush. She's just blending. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to take the shade Buns right here and the shade Mocha right here. I'm gonna mix those two together. You can go in with just one or the other, but I don't know why this, these, I just mix these two shades all the time. I'm gonna take a little swirl of each and then tap off the excess, and I'm just gonna bring that much lower on the eye area. So everything before has been more in the transition area and like lower crease. Now this is actually going on the lid itself, just only in the outer corner. She's still using that same brush, so I'm just going to dip into those two shades, tap it off like she said, and then we're just going to put it on this outer corner. I think it looks pretty good. I think. I always just kind of stamp it first using the blending brush and then once I stamp it then I start to do really small kind of motion. I don't like circular motions but just kind of like really small jiggles and that's kind of how I initially place the color down and then I start to move it around in little tiny circular motions. Alright, I'm going to grab the shade Pooter right here. <laughs> every single time I say that name, I laugh. It makes me think of John every single time I use it. I'm gonna tap off the excess. I'm just gonna so lightly, like I barely have anything on my brush. I'm just gonna lightly go over this entire area now that we have the dark and the light colors put down. It did look like she switched brushes, so I'm just gonna use this dual-ended Eco Tools brush. I'm gonna use this fluffier side to get that shade. Now I'm going to grab a little itty bitty tiny blending brush. I love little itty bitty brushes like this one for packing on color in the outer corner. So I'm going to grab some Central Perk right here, which is the darkest, deepest brown in the palette. And I'm just going to put that in the very, very outer corner. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing, just a tiny little bit. some in light which is the very first shade in the palette on just a stiff synthetic brush this is the MAC 242 
I'm gonna put that in the very inner corner of my eye. I'm so the brush I'm gonna use is the Real Techniques Instapop Crease Brush, but I actually use it for inner corner highlight. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of that. As you can already tell, I have an inner corner highlight. The camera cut out again, which is super annoying that this keeps happening today. But hopefully it stops. I'm going to grab from the Kat Von D the first color in her shade and light palette. I'm going to just put that right over top. So I don't have the Kat Von D palette, but I do have this Ofra translucent powder. It's the pressed powder in oil control. And then I'm going to use the Real Techniques Instapop shade brush. I totally think that ruined the look. Oh no. That side looks a little better. So as far as the eyes go, they don't totally look like hers, but it's fine. And then I'm just going to press out the powder on this side. Just like that. So I'm pretty sure she did her concealer and powder already as well, but she didn't mention that. So I'm going to go do my concealer and powder and then we'll be back for the lower lash line. All right. So now for the lower lash line, I'm going to go back in with the shade Pukey on a pencil brush. Any pencil brush will do. And I'm just going to blend that all the way from the outer corner to almost all the way to the inner corner. All right, now I'm gonna grab some Whoa, too fast, too fast. The brush I'm using is the Morphe 408 brush to do that. All right, now I'm gonna grab some mocha on a really stiff definer brush like this guy right here. And I'm gonna place that right on my lower lash line, like a pretty generous amount. I'm gonna bring it almost all the way into the inner corner. When I say almost in, I'm not gonna bring it all the way into the tear duct. I'm gonna stop it like right here on the eye. So I'm just taking that same brush to do what she just said. Now, just because I feel like it, I'm gonna grab the black shade in the palette right here, which is called Abyss. I'm gonna take that black, I'm gonna put it just right there, only on the outer corner of the lower lash, just to really give it some depth and dimension over there and just add to the kind of cat eye effect that we're doing. I'm just gonna use that same brush to do that. It just gives it some more definition. For me, I'm gonna go in with some eyeshadow. That's just what I've been doing recently because it's so easy. Just on that exact same brush. I'm just gonna stamp that black shadow right there directly on my lash line just to keep it nice and soft. So we're gonna do that as well. So now for my lashes, I'm going to be using the Blinking Beaut Silk Lashes in the style Bombesque. So I'm not going to use false lashes because I don't typically wear false lashes, but I'm just going to use the Urban Decay Perversion Mascara instead. <laughs> Technically, I skipped ahead and did the lower lashes, but... Oh well. I'm going to be going in with the MAC Chromographic Pencil in the shade NC15 slash NW20. It's not a white white, it's like a creamy kind of flesh tone color. I'm going to just place that right in there. So I'm going to go grab that pencil. I don't have that one exactly, but I'll grab a cream one. So I have the Maybelline Lasting Drama Waterproof Gel Pencil in the shade Soft Nude. I figured that would be the closest to what she was doing. So let's just pop this on. <laughs> And next she highlights her brow bone and I actually don't like to do that because I just don't, I don't know, so I'm not going to, but we're going to continue on with the tutorial. Okay, so now I'm going to be moving on to the face and the first thing I'm going to do is bronze. I'm going to be using the La Mer Bronzing Powder in the shade, the most expensive overpriced bronzer in the world. Okay, perfect. I'm going to be going in with that on a Smashbox brush. This is called the Sheer Powder Brush. So for bronzer, we're going to use the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil bronzer just to do that because I don't have the Lumiere bronzer, obviously. And the brush I'm going to be using is the Morphe M523 brush. It looks like this. Okay, so 
now that I have like that really sheer wash of bronzer over my face, I'm going to go in with the Kat Von D shade light contour palette. I'm going to take this middle contour shade right here. So I don't have that powder kit like I said earlier, but I'm going to use this little NARS mini. It's a Laguna bronzer and I just have a little mini. And the brush I'm going to use is the Morphe M510 brush. <laughs> I'm going to grab a little bit more of that Cover FX Perfecting Powder and I am going to just slightly bake, if you will. So I'm going to do that, but with the Maybelline Fit Me Powder again. my nose contour I'm gonna go back in with the same Kat Von D shade and light palette just a suggestion if you are going to contour your nose match it to the contour on your cheeks or match it to something happening on your cheeks so I never contour my nose but I guess I'm gonna do it today so I'm just gonna use the same two things that I was using the NARS bronzer same brush I'm gonna very lightly do it take this Naked Forever blush right here in the shade B308. It's like a really, really beautiful matte corally pink. So the blush that she picked is really similar to the Tarte Amazonian Clay blush in the shade Party, so that's the one I'm going to be using. And the brush I'm going to be using is the Real Techniques blush brush. I've been trying out these new Hourglass highlights, which I was so excited when I opened up this package in the mail because Hourglass has these beautiful highlights that they've always had like forever. And they're just like so soft and like natural and just like that glow from within. So I don't have any highlights like the Hourglass highlights, but the most intense highlight that I have is in this palette and it's from Pure Cosmetics. It's their Bronze and Brighten cheek palette and this is the shade Dreamer, I'm pretty sure. But this highlight in the middle is insane. So that's the one I'm going to use. So out of all of those lipsticks that she mentioned, I don't have any of them. But I'm going to use the NYX Lip Lingerie in Bedtime Flirt. You already know this is a good go-to for me. And it's a pinky nude, kind of like what she's talking about. So that's what I'm going to use. gonna grab some setting spray and just set my lip. For setting spray she's using the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist but I don't have that so I'm just gonna use this Flower Beauty Seal the Deal Long Lasting Setting Spray. The end of the video is just her doing bloopers so I guess that's the end of this tutorial. I think this look turned out pretty well. This is not a look I typically would do and some of the techniques I don't normally do, but I think I did good for the most part and I do enjoy some of the things that she did, just how she blended her eyeshadow and how she had the powder on the corner of the eye like that was really helpful and I probably will do those things in the future. I hope you guys enjoyed it and if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe to this channel and let me know of any other video ideas you like to see from me because I love to do those for you and I'll see you guys next Saturday. Bye guys!